Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to my Halloween movie marathon. And tonight I'm going over another of Universal's Monsters films. This time I'm going over Frankenstein. Um, I'm just going to get this right out of the way. <coughs> um, one of my biggest gripes about uh, the film is the same one that I had with the Dracula movie. And that there's pretty much no music except for the opening credits and then the ending title card. And... Something tells me that that's uh, gonna be a recurring uh, thing for the rest of the Universal movies that I watch. So I'm gonna be, uh, so I'm just gonna get that out of the way now. That way I don't have to constantly mention it uh, whenever I watch like The Wolfman, The Mummy, The Invisible Man, and all those other ones that I'm gonna see for this month. So with that out of the way, uh, the story was okay. Um, the most exposure that I've had to Frankenstein is Mel Brooks's Young Frankenstein, which, for the most part, um, I mean, this film saw a plot was, uh, was very similar to that, or I guess you could say that Young Frankenstein's plot was very similar to this one. Uh, I have, I haven't exactly read the original Mary Shelley Frankenstein book, however, I did, uh, I did read this one graphic novel of it. And, um, and I guess uh, you could say that I'm a little bit on the fence on this, that, um, that the, uh, that the movie is not a one-for-one -one adaptation. In fact, like, it's very far removed from the original. Like, for one, in the original, uh, the appearance of Frankenstein's monster is that, um, is, like, he, he looks more like a corpse, than anything and he's got like this really long hair right uh that's not like that in the universal frankenstein for universal um he basically just looks like a huge hulking creature with like a tall uh with a tall head uh as well as those um conductor metal things in his neck uh that and the fact that in the original novel um the monster had a had a had a pretty good uh, brain where he could understand things rather well but in the movie um he was given an abnormal brain and that's basically what causes uh, the monster to ba uh, basically act like a child now i'm not saying that they should have uh, been a straightforward adaptation of the book because the book is actually uh, fairly dark because, uh, like, it's really more like a tragedy of uh, Frankenstein's monster basically trying to, from what I gather from the graphic novel that I read years ago, uh, he was trying to find, like, love and peace, but everybody shunned him because of his appearance. So, basically, he snapped and started killing people. Uh, now, in, uh, now, in this movie, though, because of his abnormal brain and because... Um, and because he has, like, the mental uh, capacity of a small child, um, the, the story is uh, very different, where, uh, where he breaks out of, uh, Frankenstein's castle, kills a couple people, um, he, he plays, uh, now with this little girl, but because he doesn't really understand right from wrong, he accidentally kills, uh, the kid, which... I am gonna, uh, I am gonna say that is another thing that I, uh, that I do uh, kind of commend about this film, that, like, the, uh, that this movie doesn't hold back. Like, there's a, there's a lot of movies even today that, um, that are, uh, that don't really show, uh, that, like, don't really go too far where they don't want to, like, kill a kid or anything, where they don't want to show certain things, otherwise that would piss off the audience, but, the original Frankenstein movie that came out in the 30s, uh, they actually had the balls to, like, go there. And I think that, uh, and honestly, I think that's one of the more memorable scenes about the film, like, of, of Frankenstein, like, picking up, uh, Maria and just throwing her into the lake. Um, and speaking of Frankenstein's monster, uh, Boris Karloff does a fantastic job, uh, in this, uh, film. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of, uh, Boris Karloff's appearances, but he does great in this, uh, movie. Like, 
uh, even though he's not even speaking anything, like, he does great as a, as an almost silent, uh, creature, just lumbering around and just, um, and basically strangling, uh, people. Um, the doctor, Henry Frankenstein, who is not named Victor in this, uh, iteration, uh, he's, uh, he's alright. Igor, who... Uh, technically, his name is Fritz in this film. He's also uh, he's also all right. Um, I kind of wonder if um, if Universal didn't have the full rights to the entire novel because again, like the Doctor's name isn't named Victor. His name is uh, Henry, and the Igor character is Fritz instead of Igor, as well as the monster's appearance. Um, and again, I'm not saying that uh, uh, that that uh, that that's a negative or anything, but I do have to wonder um, how Frankenstein movies would be if um, if they did a straightforward adaptation of Mary Shelley's original novel, because like uh, basically almost every single version of Frankenstein that has come out since then, um, like Van Helsing or Young Frankenstein I just mentioned, um, and even, um, even in, like, the kids' movies Hotel Transylvania or The Munsters, um, like, that's, uh, that's the version of Frankenstein that they always, uh, go with, with the, with the green skin, well, green when they eventually, yeah, redid it in color, the green skin, the stitches on the neck, the little conductors, and just the towering uh, body, that's the appearance that, like, that, that's the appearance that uh, every version uh, takes from, instead of the original novel where he looks more like a stitched together corpse with uh, longer hair. But it does uh, make me wonder um, if they had gone with the original adaptation of the book and did that for the first uh, movie, uh, how different basically every other version of Frankenstein would have been. But those were all my thoughts uh, for this movie, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another horror movie review. And again, since I'm covering the Universal Monster movies, uh, be sure uh, to check out uh, the other ones when they appear. Good night, everyone.